Hi, Stephen King here. I'm going to read to you from a book that I have coming out called You Like It Darker. There are a number of stories in the book. This is one of the darkest ones. It's called Danny Coughlin's Bad Dream. It's a bad dream. Danny's had a few before. Everyone has a nightmare from time to time. But this is the worst one ever. Nothing bad is happening at first, but that doesn't help. The sense of impending doom is so strong, it's an actual taste in his mouth, like sucking on a clump of pennies. He's walking along the shoulder of a dirt road that's been packed and oiled to keep the dust down. It's night. A quarter moon has just risen. To Danny, it looks like a sideways grin or a sneer. He passes a sign reading County Road F. Only the O and the Y have been spray-painted over, and Uck has been crammed into the right of the F, so the sign now reads, Cunt Road Fuck. There are a couple of bullet holes for good measure. There's corn on both sides of the road, not as high as an elephant's eye, but maybe four feet, suggesting it's early summer. County Road F runs dead straight up a mild rise. In Kansas, most rises are mild. At the top is a black bulk of a building that fills Danny with unreasoning horror. Some tin thing is going tinka, tinka, tinka. He wants to stop, wants nothing to do with that square black bulk, but his legs carry him on. There's no stopping them. He's not in control. A breeze gives the corn a bone-like rattle. It's chilly on his cheeks and forehead, and he realizes he is sweating. When he gets to the top of the rise, calling it a crest would just be stupid, there's enough light to see the sign on the cinder block building reads, Hilltop Texaco. In front are two cracked concrete islands where gasoline pumps once stood. The tinka 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 sound is coming from rusty signs on a pole out front. One reads, Reg 199. One reads, Mid 219. And the one on the bottom reads, high test 249. Nothing here to worry about, Danny thinks. Nothing here to be afraid of. And he's not worried. He's not afraid. Terrified is what he is. Tinka, tinka, tinka go the signs advertising long gone gas prices. The big office window is broken. Ditto the glass in the door. But Danny can see weeds growing up around the shards, reflecting the moonlight and knows that it's been a while since they were broken. The vandals, bored country kids most likely, have had their fun and moved on. Danny moves on, too, around the side of the abandoned station. Doesn't want to, has to. He has no control. Now he hears something else, scratching and panting. I don't want to see this, he thinks. If spoken aloud, the thought would have come out as a moon. He goes around the side, kicking a couple of empty motor oil cans, Haviland, the Texaco brand, out of his way. There's a rusty metal trash barrel, overturned and spilling more cans and Coors bottles and whatever paper trash isn't blown away. Behind the station, there's a mangy mongrel dog digging at the oil-stained earth. It hears Danny and looks around, its eyes silver circles in the moonlight. It wrinkles back its snout and gives a growl that can mean only one thing. Mine, mine, mine. That's not for you, Danny says, thinking, I wish it weren't for me either, but I think it is. The dog lowers its haunches as if to spring, but Danny's not afraid, not of the mud anyway. He's a town man these days, but he grew up in rural Colorado where there were dogs everywhere, and he knows an empty threat when he faces one. He bends and picks up an empty oil can, the dream so real, so detailed, he can feel the scrim of leftover grease down the side. He doesn't even have to throw it. Raising it is enough. The dog turns tail and leaves at a limping run. Either something wrong with one of its back legs or a split pad on one of the paws. Danny's feet carry him forward. He sees that the dog has scratched a hand, and part of a forearm out of the ground. Two of the fingers have been stripped to the bone. The fleshy part of the palm is also gone, now in the dog's belly. Around the wrist, 
inedible and thus of no use to a hungry dog, is a charm bracelet. Danny draws in a breath and opens his mouth and screams himself awake, sitting bolt upright in bed, a thing he's never done before. Thank God he lives alone so there's no one to hear it. At first, he doesn't even know where he is. That derelict gas station seems like the reality, the morning light coming in through the curtains, the dream. He's even rubbing his hand on the Royals' T-shirt he went to bed still wearing to wipe off the oil that was on the side of the Haviland can that he picked up. This goose flesh from one end of his body to the other, his balls have drawn up tight as walnuts. Then he registers his bedroom and realizes none of that was real, no matter how real it seemed. He strips off the T-shirt, drops his boxers, and heads to the trailer's tiny bathroom to shave and shower off the dream. The good thing about the bad ones, he thinks, as he lathers his face, is they never last long. Dreams are like cotton candy. They just melt away.